All right then, so we have two of our farm fields up and running, one for name and one for sugars. Now we need a third farm field, and that is going to be for the strength of the coffee. Do they want a weak coffee or a strong coffee? And to do this, we're gonna use a slider widget. Now, a slider widget is going to allow a user to slide a little control from the left to the right. And if the control is all the way to the left, that's going to signify a weak coffee. And if they slide it all the way to the right, that is going to be a strong coffee. So we're also going to play around with some nice color effects as well, so that the color of the slider reflects how strong the coffee is going to be. So light brown on the left and dark brown on the right. We'll see how all that works later on. For now, let's start to create this very simple slider widget. So it's called slider, like I say, built right in to Flutter. And inside, we need to specify a few different properties. First of all, we need a min value for the slider, and that is going to be 100. Now, we're going to go up in steps of 100 in this slider. So if they slide it over one bit, it's going to go to 200, and again, 300, 400, etc., all the way up to 900. Because remember, we use these numbers, the strength number, inside the color. So, you know, like we can say colors.brown and then in square brackets, something like 100 or 600. And the larger that number, the darker the color will be, right? So that's why it's going to go up in steps of 100. Now, the max is going to be 900. So that's going to be when the slider control is all the way to the right. When it's all the way to the left, the value will be 100. Now, we need to also say how many divisions there's going to be, how many times they can actually move it over. Well, there's going to be eight divisions because if you think about it, we can move it eight times. Uh, we can go from 100 to 200 to 3 to 4 to 5 to 6 to 7 to 8 to 9, and that's eight divisions in total. So let's say divisions is going to be eight in total. Okay, so now we have this slider, but we also need an unchanged property as well, which is going to be a function, and it takes in the value. And inside this function, all we want to do is set the state and update our property, which is going to track the current strength over here. So let me copy this and let's do now down here set state and inside here we pass a function and in that function all we need to do is take this current strength and set it equal to the val which is this thing over here okay now you'll notice that we get an error right here for val and if we hover over we're going to see that we can't assign a double to a variable of type int so it's saying here that we're trying to set this to be a double but up here we specify that this is an integer and that's because we get a value back from this as a double so every time they move it it's going to be like 100.0 for example and 900.0 okay and that's the reason we're getting this error so what we can do is take the value and actually use a method called round on it and what that does is round it to the nearest integer. Now, the doubles are always going to be like 100 or 200.0 or 300.0. And when we use round, it's just going to round it to 100, 200 or 300, etc. So it's not going to change our data really too much. We're just going to turn it into an integer this way. So now we have that. Let me save it. And we do get an error. And that's because we've not added all of the properties that we need on here. So let's add a couple more properties. So first of all, we need a value property. Now, the value is going to be either the initial value, which is going to be 100, or if they've selected something else, then it's going to be that value. So whatever's stored in here. But remember, we have to turn that into a double, right? So let me now say in brackets, first of all, that it's either going to be the current strength, if we have a value of that, or 100 to begin with, and whichever one of those numbers it is, we then need to turn it into a double. So two, double, like so, because remember, this slider works with doubles. So now we have that property. Now we should be able to preview it over here, and we can do, and now we can slide it all the way over here like this. And now, if I was to press Control T to open up the terminal, then go to Debug Console, if I press Update, then hopefully we can see now we get 700 for the strength because we've gone way over here. If I move it over here, press update, the strength is 300 all the way over here and it should be 100 and all the way over to the right, it should be 900. Awesome. So now that is controlling the strength of the coffee. 
So that's cool, the functionality is there, but I also want to play around with the colors of these things as well. So we can control the color of this slider, of the little thing at the back, and also this little circle as well, the control, by a couple of different properties. First of all, we're gonna say the active color, oops, if we can spell it correctly, that is, the active color, and that is gonna be colors.brown, right? Now if I save it, and come over here, we can see that this thing over here is brown, and all the bit to the left is brown, but the bit to the right, the inactive bit, is still the original color. So that's what the active color does, but we can also use inactive color, and that colors the rest of it as well. So we can say colors.brown for this as well, and save it, and now we can see the whole thing is brown. Now, I don't want it to be the same brown all the time. What I'd like to do is color this the same color as the current strength. Does that make sense? So if the current strength is up here in 700, for example, then this all will be a bit darker. And if it's over here, it's gonna be a light brown. Now to do that, it's pretty simple because we now have a value in current strength. So we can just pass it in here in square brackets. Now we might not automatically have a value. It might be that when we first load this, current strength is null. And we can't pass null into here, so we have to provide a fallback option as well, much like we do here. So let me copy that dude and paste it here. And if we have a value for current strength, then we'll use that. If not, then we'll use 100, all right? So let's do the same for this thing as well. Save it, and now we can see, because it's way over here, it's 100 basically, as we move it and current strength updates, we have a value for this, that should be 200 now, it goes a bit darker, and so forth. So we can see the strength of this coffee as we move it. So that kind of should reflect how you like your coffee to look in the cup, how dark you want it. It makes sense, right? You want a darker color if you want a stronger coffee. And now if I open up this, make sure everything's still working, go to debug console, I'm gonna refresh just to clear this more than anything else. And then, yeah, we do get a little error. Again, we are gonna sort that later on, so don't worry, we're not gonna get that later. Go to settings, let's update this. So I'll say Sean, and then down here in the sugars, I'm gonna say two sugars. I'm gonna move this way over here, press updates, and now we can see we're tracking all of those values. So this is all pretty much working. In the next video, we're gonna go one step further and bring in the user data into this form.